So something like two years ago, we took a look at this pretty cool website that shows us the entire map of the observable universe. This was made by Nikita Sherman of John Hopkins University, and the video in the description describes all of this just a little bit more. But now Sherman, along with Professor Bryce Menard, joined forces to create something a little bit different, but just as impressive. And they call this Biocubes. It is once again a website, and it is once again a really cool visualization, but this time showing us a kind of a comparison between the biosphere of the planet, which includes all sorts of different types of life, and the so-called technosphere, the stuff that we humans created in the last 150 years. And so in this video, I wanted to go through this with you, just to show you what it's like and explain some of the concepts. Although honestly, the website itself provides us with a lot of explanations already. Anyway, without further ado, let's, I guess, start. And here we start with six different cubes. Each cube is a visual representation of the total mass for a specific type of life. And as you can see, plants really dominate. 900 gigatons of everything on the planet is in form of plants, and a mere 5.2 gigatons are animals. But obviously, if it wasn't for plants, none of these animals would be able to survive because it's both food and a provider of a lot of other resources, including oxygen, so the animals can breathe. In the middle here we have fungi at 24 gigatons, and their primary role in this relationship is as a kind of a decomposer. Along with bacteria, they essentially get rid of anything that died, recycling all the resources for future use. And then on the right we have bacteria at 140 gigaton, archaea at 14 gigaton, and protists at 8 gigaton. Although protists technically belong to the left side, because they're eukaryotes, but just not animal, not plant, and not mushroom, not fungus. Overall though, as you can see, even the tiny bacteria represent an enormous biomass, much more than animals and fungi combined, only dwarfed by plants. But then we also get viruses. Now even today they're not actually defined as life, but they're definitely a part of DNA and are actually responsible for a lot of functions inside a lot of different species, and in case of humans, they're at least 7-8% to of our entire genetic code. And as you might have learned from one of the videos in the description, if it wasn't for viruses, we would not exist. For example, human reproduction directly depends on retroviruses. And so yeah, at 0.2 gigatons, they're also kind of important. But all of this, as we know today, came from Luca, last universal common ancestor. And even though here it's presented as something that existed 4 billion years ago, a much more recent study established that Luca most likely existed 4.2 billion years ago, so basically when the Earth was only 300 million years old. Now obviously we have no idea what kind of an organism this was, but it clearly gave birth to everything. And then we get a bit of a more breakdown for various types of animals on the planet. And here, as you can see, different types of animals are broken up into individual biocubes. And in terms of total mass, it's the marine arthropods that seem to represent the most, with fish being the close second. And so in terms of total biomass, marine animals quite clearly dominate the entire planet. Which is kind of expected because we assume life came from the oceans, and so it had a lot more time to establish itself in there, evolving into a lot of different species. But there is also a type of life that dominates the planet that we often forget about, and it's actually underground. And here we have things like worms or annelids at 0.4 gigaton and land arthropods that include various types of insects. And then we come to the land animals. And here, compared to mammals at 0.014 gigaton, humans definitely dominate. 0.12 gigaton of biomass is basically us. And though by mass, arthropods represent approximately three times more biomass, this mass of human biomass has really been achieved in just the last five to six decades. Whereas all of the other wild animals and birds basically represent 1% of the animal biomass, much much less than all of the humans combined. Here there's actually a really good comparison showing us that humans represent 10 times more biomass than all of the wild animals out there, except for livestock. And so basically, to survive and to acquire such a biomass, humans had to come up with the idea of livestock. So basically, animals that provide us with protein. And here it's almost double of biomass of humans. But interestingly, both of these are really just a recent creation. If you were to look at the biomass 100 years ago, neither livestock nor humans would adapt to such tremendous numbers. And so even though these biocubes 
are the result of 4 billion years of evolution, something else has been developing alongside these cubes in the last 150 years. And as you can imagine, it's something to do with humans. Here's our first example. There are roughly 15 times more cars by mass than there are humans. And so in this next part, all of the cubes are now going to be changed into something that humans produced. And it starts with the year 1900. There are only 1.6 billion people on Earth, but various advanced constructions on the planet have already begun. For example, there are already 99 gigatons of bricks on the planet. And so the next part shows us how all of this grows in the next 120 years. And you can basically see that even though it starts relatively slowly, as the time goes, especially after the Second World War, things escalate really quickly. As a matter of fact, in the last 30 years, the amount of construction on the planet increases quite dramatically, and it reaches ridiculous amounts. And so starting with plastics, here we already have mass basically higher than all of the animals on the planet. As a matter of fact, twice as many plastics as all of the animals combined. But even more metals. Four times more metals than plastics, or eight times as much as all of the animals out there. And then things get really extreme. Asphalt, which is of course responsible for all of the roads out there, represents 65 gigatons. Now asphalt is connected to oil extraction because it's a petroleum-based product, and so over time, in the next 100 years or so, as the world runs out of oil, asphalt roads will probably have to be replaced with something else. Then we have bricks, which used to be the preferred way to build different structures, and as a result they actually represent 1000 times more biomass than all of the humans combined. But following bricks, we have aggregates, which are often used for road construction as well. But more importantly, we have concrete. Literally, the second most used substance on the entire planet after water. And here it's 598 gigatons. An absolutely ridiculous amount that mostly increased in the last few decades, as a lot of different countries out there suddenly started to modernize, constructing different cities and urbanizing in the process. And so this right here, is basically the sign of urbanization. But here's I guess the really surprising part. Most of this technomass has been created during our lifetimes. Ok, not if you're like super young watching this video, but if you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s or older, that definitely applies. And so all of this is the result of the last few decades of construction on the planet. But much more importantly, it seems to outweigh the total biomass of the planet. Last year, in 2023, there were 1200 gigatons of technomass compared to 1100 gigatons of biomass. And so all of these human-made cubes now outweigh all of the biomass by at least 10%. But I guess the scarier part here, or the more unfortunate part, is the fact that as the technomass grows, it also leads to things like, for example, deforestation or the decrease of biomass. And so unfortunately, there is a kind of a reverse relationship here. With the increase in technomass, biomass is most likely going to drop over time. And so helping us visually see how we are affecting the planet is actually a brilliant way to teach all of this. Which is exactly why I wanted to mention this website and of course share it with everyone. And here you can even get this as a poster, helping you visualize all of this at all times. Although I think what would be super interesting is if they actually continue doing this for several years just to show us how all this changes over time. Now obviously measuring biomass is not very easy, and so a lot of this will probably have to come from different assumptions, but there are definitely statistical studies out there that keep track of all of this, and so seeing the changes over time, specifically showing us how this actually changes in the last decade or so, would probably help people understand this just a little bit more. Either way though, definitely a cool website, and definitely something that's worth exploring by yourself, and so check out the link in the description below. On that note, once Menard and Starkman create something else, we'll definitely take a look at that as well. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.